Hello and welcome back to our FPS RPG series. We're in chapter 3 now and that means we're working on our inventory system for our game here. In the previous episode we set up the basics of our inventory system and in this episode we're going to add the add to inventory function to it. So let's find our inventory uh, system in the component. And in here, we'll be creating our add to inventory function. So the way this function is going to work is the inventory, and as I said in previous episode, the inventory and equipment are two separate things. Okay, we're going to make them two separate things in this game. The inventory is going to store things like uh, crafting materials, currencies, quest items, things of that nature. And some of these things may be able to stack, some won't. So we need to do some checks in that regard to find out how we're going to handle items that can be stacked or can't be stacked. So to add to inventory we need some information. We need to know what we're adding and how many. So go to add to inventory and click on new parameter and in here we're going to add item to be added. And we're going to add another one called quantity. The quantity will be an integer which is a whole number and the item to be added will be the data structure so item details struct so now we've got this information we need to determine whether or not we can actually um, stack this thing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a macro to handle this so I'm going to go to macro new macro and this one would be um, can be stacked and we're going to have uh, one input and two outputs. The input is going to be an item details struct, so this be item, and the outputs are going to be execute. Uh, execute sorry. The first one is going to be called can be stacked, and the second one is going to be called can't be stacked. Um, we're also going to want a input as well for the execute here. So just call this in and I'll put it above right at the top there. So we can take the item here and drag this out and break it to get hold of the can be stacked boolean. And this will go into a branch like so, going into the in, and then true will go into can be stacked, and false will go into can't be stacked compile go back to your add to inventory and they can drag that macro out like so and like so so now it's going to go down one or two paths based on whether or not this item that's being added can actually be stacked we didn't have to put in a macro we could have just put this same code here however we'll be adding to this in time so it saves us a lot of work if we need to duplicate it over and over and over again so with the can be stacked, we're going to go down to can't be stacked first of all, because that's the easier one to set up. So for the can't be stacked, we're going to drag our inventory array out, which is get, and from here we're going to get the length and size of it. So whether or not we can actually pick up the item that we've got. So we need to check if this has space. So we're going to go from inventory here and do get length. And we're going to check the length is less than, but not equal to, less than the inventory size. And this will give us a boolean, which we put into a branch. And that will connect up to can't be stacked. So this checks whether or not we have space in our inventory. Now, we could simplify this even further and create this a function or a macro. So we're going to do this as a macro. And this macro is going to be called uh, inventory has space and that will determine whether or not the inventory has space to be added now because this is a new addition to our um, let's go back to here sorry because it, this is a new sorry a new uh, stack rather than uh, adding to an existing one we don't need to check the quantity we're not worried about that for in this case because we're adding a whole new stack. So if we do have space, we need to put this into an output. So we can go to outputs, add two executes in here, and we'll do has space, and 
In fact, we'll do this as, yeah, no, we'll do it as an executes. We'll do it as an executes. Has space and has no space. Again, hook up the true and false to this as appropriate. Hit compile, back to add to inventory. So if inventory has space, it'll go up top. If not, it goes down bottom. If it has no space, we're going to put in a return node. And we're going to return here a boolean, which we're going to, we're going to call um, successful. Plug that into no space and leave it unticked. Okay, so if it does have space, we need to add it to our inventory. So I'm going to drag out our inventory array, which is get. And then from there, we're going to do add and connect that up to the has space. Now the input for this is gonna be this item to be added and its quantity. So we're gonna drag out from here and choose make. And then the item details is gonna be item to be added. Item to be added. And quantity will be quantity. Let's just space this out a bit. Like so. And then we'll do a return node at the end of that for true. So to add an item that is going to be stackable, we need to check our inventory slots and look for where there are spaces and then fill those spaces as we see them. So what I'm going to do is create a new function to handle this. Now the reason why I'm using a function is because I'm going to have a looping function in here which is going to do some calculations and work out the end result at the end there. So a new function here, we're going to do um, add to stack. And as add to stack, we need an input here. We need the item to be added. And we also need the quantity. integer for quantity and then item struct for the item to be added so for this we're going to drag our inventory array out and do a for each loop in here okay next we're going to take our quantity and before we do the for each loop in fact we're going to promote that to a local variable and we'll call this one lock underscore um, quantity remaining and this thing is going to keep track of how many items we have left to find a slot for so on the for each loop we need to find the matching array in our elements so I'm going to drag this out and break I'm also going to take out my uh, item to be added, which is here. Item to be added. And break and split this. And split the item details on that break there. We want to be able to see the things here. So we're going to take the names and see if they're equal. So drag out, do equals. And plug in the other name there. So this means if we found a slot that matches our item we want to be added. So that would go into a branch, and if it's true, we need to now know its quantity. So next we need to do is add our quantities together. So take the quantity from your for each loop, do add integer, and you want to add the local quantity remaining. Plug that in. We then want to do a modulo on this. Now modulo is a percentage symbol, and this divides the number by whatever we type in here and outputs the remaining number. So if I put in 99 here, this means that this, if it goes above 99, will give us a remaining number. And that will be set to lock quantity remaining. So set lock quantity remaining to this. So if lock quantity remaining is above 0, meaning there's still items left, we need to carry on with our for each loop and keep looking. Now, every time it does goes to find another one, it will find maybe another slot. And it'll look in that quantity and add it on and again do the model load to it. And it'll keep doing it, doing it, doing it until lock quantity remaining equals zero. So let's check if this is equal to zero. So we're going to do uh, is less than or equal to 
zero and put that to a branch. If it is true, we're going to do a return node to come out of here. So this is just doing the quantity uh, checking. We haven't actually changed anything in our array. So where do we put that? Well, it'll be somewhere between or after the lock quantity remaining here. So I'm going to put mine just after here. Or sorry, just before the lock quantity remaining. So with that, I'm going to get the inventory array out and do set array element and plug that into true. The index is going to come from our lock array index. Plug that in. The item is the item slot. So we need to drag that out and make. The quantity is going to come from this addition that we just done. So drag that in like so. And the item details are going to be the item to be added parameter that we, we brought into this function over here. Let's just space this apart. And plug that in. Okay, and that is basically it. So this is going to keep going round and round and round until the lock quantity remaining is equal to zero and it keeps adding it and storing it to the array element. So we're now done here. We click on return nodes and I think we don't need to return anything. We'll click compile and we'll come out of that back into our add to inventory. And we're going to use the add to stack function, drag it out and plug it into can be stacked. The item to be added. It's going to be the parameter item to be added and the quantity is going to be the parameter quantity. Then add to stack at the end of that, we're going to do a return node and make that successful true. But what if we have items in our stack left over and the inventory becomes full? Because this add to stack is going to keep on going round and round and round. Uh, but what if it reaches the end of our for each loop, the completed part, and lock quantity remaining still exists as a number? So we, what we want to do there is make the character drop the remaining quantity that we don't have space for. So on the completed, we're going to do that same check we've done over here for quantity is greater than or less than zero. So do, uh, so I get quantity remaining. And we're going to check if that is less than or equal to zero. And if it is equal to zero, we're going to make it return like normal over here. But if it's false, we're going to return a quantity that is remaining. So what I'm going to do on outputs is add a new output and put in quantity remaining and that'd be an integer and for everything else it'd be left at zero but for the false we're going to plug in our lock quantity remaining compile so if it ever reaches this point it means that the inventory has no space to be added to a stack okay there's no more stacks for it to be added to so on back on the add to inventory function, after we've done the add to stack, we need to check how much quantity is remaining in this number here. So check that by going is less than or equal to zero. Put that into a branch and plug it in. If it is less than or equal to zero, we're going to go to true into the return node as we have done before and make sure successful is ticked on. If it is false, we're then going to try and add it to some space. So we need to check if inventory has space. So we're going to use that same macro over here. False. If it does have space, we're going to tell it to add a new stack. So we're going to simply do this and paste it over here. There's space. Let's just reorganize it so it's a bit neater. And now go to add. And at the end of that, we'll do return node successful true. If it doesn't have space, so if we have something remaining and we don't have any more space, we need to return out false. And when it's false, I want to actually output the number of items that are left. 
Because then we could deal something with it. We could either destroy them, drop them, whatever it may be. So go to outputs, add new outputs here. And this would be quantity remaining. And that is going to come from our quantity remaining from add to stack. So let's drag that down here. And that's like so. Make sure successful is not ticked. Okay, and that kind of brings the end of this function. So let's run through it and make sure we've covered everything. So if we pick up some items, we then check whether or not these items could be stacked. If they can't be stacked, no problem. We go down here, we check if the inventory has any space. And if we don't have any space, we can say back to the whatever happens to cause this function and say, no, we weren't successful. And the quantity remaining will be the quantity that we had. So type in quantity, like so. Now, if the, the inventory does have space, it's going to go up and add a new slot to it called quantity and add item to be added and the quantity to it. And if it's successful, quantity will be zero and it was successful will be ticked. That's all fine. But if we have an item that can be stacked, we go up, we try to add it to a stack and it will add and fill out all the spaces it can do with the in quantity we're trying to add to it. And at the end of it, it will output whatever's left remaining. If whatever's left remaining is greater than or is less than or equal to zero, meaning that we filled it up, uh, we managed to find space for all our items, we go up to this branch, and if it's true, we'll do return node successful, quantity remaining zero. If though we have still got some quantity remaining and we've filled up all the available slots that have already existed, we then try to add a new slot. So we go down to inventory has no space. If it does have space, great, we'll make a new slot and add it to it. If we don't have space, then we need to take note we weren't successful and output the remaining quantity. And that's it. We hit compile and hopefully that makes come some sense to you what's going on here. Uh, there may be some things that we add on to this later on when we start adding more elements to our code, but for now this should suffice. Thanks very much for watching. If you want to see the next episode, you can head over to uh, patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey. We can watch the next episode plus much, much more all over my channel well before anyone else. Big that, a shout out and thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. None of this would be possible without you guys. So thank you again once again. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.